Hello everybody and welcome to Virtual Church. Um, today here in the UK is Remembrance Sunday um, where we remember everybody over the centuries who has given their lives, um, has fought for and defended um, their country. It's a very poignant day here in the UK. It's celebrated throughout the entire country um, in all of the churches and cathedrals across the land. Indeed, I was at Romsey this morning, Romsey Abbey, uh, playing uh, the Remembrance Service down there. Lots of patriotic hymns and some wonderful singing from the choir. Well, we started there with the uh, March from Scipio uh, by Handel. Hadn't been requested. Um, it's, it's sometimes known as the, um, the, 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 the something, <laughs> the something march. The, um, I've forgotten what it's called. Darn. <laughs> um, the Brigadier's March. Is it the Brigadier's March? I don't think it's a Brigadier. It can't be the Brigadier's March. It might be the Brigadier's March. You're all shouting at the screen. You've got the chat open. I've got the chat open, so let me know what it's called. Okay, I've got my um, requests form here. Um, these are all hymns for today. Look at all of these that have come in. I don't know whether you can see it on your screen. Lots of requests for today. Um, so, lots to get through. Whew, where do we start? I think we should start um, go, at, go in at the top. Let's have a wonderful um, hymn. It is called um, Hail the Day That Sees Him Rise. It's um, a request from Robert Parr, and it's in the 1982 hymnal, and it's number 214, is what Robert says. I hope it is. This is the um, putting the new BIS request form through its paces. It is. Hail the day that sees him rise, alleluia. Glorious to his native skies, alleluia. Christ a while to mortals given, alleluia. Enters now the highest heaven, alleluia. So Robert, let's have this, um, let's have this uh, hymn for you. And also thank you, thank you for your patronage as well. Okay, so I've got the chat open. Please check chat away. Please introduce yourselves and and carry on, carry on just chatting. <laughs> okay, hail the day that sees him rise. If there are any issues with the video or the audio, please do let me know, and we'll do our best to sort it. The good news, by the way, is um, I've got my cam my microphone, no, my camera stand. Uh, I bought a new one, so we can actually go up to a bird's eye view. Uh, to see my hands from, from the top.
There we go. I hope you enjoyed the, um, the bird's eye view and you can see what I'm doing. The idea is you can see the, the old hands go working away and also you can see the stops. I think most of you might um, by now know roughly uh, what, the, where, what the stops on this organ are. Um, luckily the, the cameras are high enough quality that you should be able to tell the stops in red, the, the stops with the red text tend to be the um, reeds and the lower stops right at the bottom tend to be the lowest, the uh, deeper stops. So the, on the pedal they're the 32s, the basic 16s and the swell, they're the 16 foot flues as well and the open diapasons at the bottom. Same on, on this side, the choir and great. Um, yeah, so you can see me pulling out the stops and going to the bird's eye. Um, yes, oh, you're well, looking... Christine Hodges has told us that it is the slow march of the Grenadier Guards. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, the Grenadier March. The Grenadier Guards. Grenadier Guards, there we go. So there we go. That's what it is called. Thanks, Christine. I knew someone would know. I knew someone would know. Um, that's one of the wonderful things about having these um, chats. So interactive is you can correct me. I ought to do a, um, I ought to do a, a section called um, I stand corrected because the amount, the amount of things I say which are complete gobbledygook I'm sure uh, is, um, is, is mounting up. Okay <laughs> so um, John McKay has requested, I'm going to go for John because we're actually in the in the same hymn book, he's asked for a wondrous type O Vision Fair 137. Um, a wondrous type of vision fair of glory that the church may share, which Christ upon the mountain shows, where brighter than the sun he glows. This is a request from John McKay, who is also uh, one of our great patrons. So thank you very much, John, indeed, for your help. Um, support. Tune is called Werum, and the words look like they're um, originally uh, 15th century. Um, they've been translated, um, they're, they're originally Latin. I think you'll all over tune. So let's have this one. Um, um, there's lots of organ pieces as well today, by the way. You've got some organ pieces lined up. Uh, if you want to make some requests for organ pieces, I've got some requests already, but feel free to make requests. You never know, you might just get what you wish for.
such a wonderful tune, that one. Such a wonderful tune. It's just not a, you know, some, I don't know whether you'll know what I mean when I say this. Some, some hymns are a little bit, dare I say it, um, I'm going to duck as I say this, pretentious. <laughs> I was just getting a, some, I just saw a wire on the pedal board. I think that was from when the Viscounts were here. Um, they left a bit of wire on the pedal board. <laughs> Hopefully I didn't need, need that. Um, yeah, some, some tunes I find are a little bit awkward and um, overly complicated and difficult for the choir to sing. Uh, sorry, the congregation to sing. Um, sometimes for the choir to sing as well. But that one doesn't, that one's not, it's just such a beautiful lyrical tune like that the, like the gorgeous Wesley tunes you know something like Hereford it's just a very gorgeous tune I find that one um, speaks to me very in a, in a very similar way very very lyrical almost qu quite slow and just very straightforward but beautiful um, nonetheless last one from the um, the hymnal 1982 this is a request from Jenny Allen who is also a patron so three uh, requests so far from our very good and supportive patrons. Guys, your support is so much appreciated. I can't tell you how much it really is appreciated. Um, I am going to St Edmundsbury Cathedral tomorrow. That's um, Bury St Edmunds in Suffolk here in the UK. <coughs> Excuse me. A wonderful um, newly refurbished Harrison and Harrison organs. You might realise by now that I like Harrison and Harrison organs. Um, I'm going there tomorrow and uh, Tuesday um, and also Wednesday morning, uh, spending two nights there recording the organ, just like we did in Gloucester, recording the organist there, giving a recital, I'll play a virtual church, he will do an organ demonstration, I will show you where the microphones are. So it's a little mini-series um, on, um, on the back of Gloucester. So I'm really looking forward to going to meet Richard Cook, who is going to give us an, uh, give us an organ recital. Uh, tomorrow. Okay, so Jenny Allen has requested, let saints on earth in concert sing with those whose work is done. The tune is called uh, Dundee, and if, you, if you've got the, um, the hymnal 1982, it is number 526. Excuse me, I better, I better put my phone on silent. <laughs> How rude. There we go. So, it's a bit difficult to see all the chat because for some reason and I haven't been able to get get the text very big so it's there's a lot of text on the screen at the minute and it's going all over the place and um, frankly I'm not sure I'm going to be able to see a huge amount of chat um, I'm going to have to decide what to do uh, if I if I look too long at the screen I'll play fewer right notes <laughs> so it's a bit of a compromise basically and also the tempo go, always goes a bit wonky anyway enough chat more, more music. Let saints on earth in concert sing.
I just took the opportunity there to explore some of the quieter stops. Very rare actually that we use the swell division on this organ as a solo division. So you heard the in the first verse uh, the trumpet stop um, with a bit of box and then in verse two you heard the, the, um, the hoofed work eight, uh, eight and four flutes but in verse three you then heard the vox humana with the um, nazar two and two thirds and of course the tremulant. This organ is really, really diverse, isn't it? It does a lot. It's, it's nice to have, to hear some of those stops. There's also, there's also a, a cornet um, uh, disposition on the, on the swell, which we'll use um, today. It's beautiful. There's actually a cornet on every single manual. There's one on the hoofed work, uh, the choir division, solo division, and the swell division. There isn't one, I don't think, on the pedal. Although there are lots of um, mutations on the pedal that quite frankly, I don't know what to do with. <laughs> anyway, let's now put the, the hymnal 1982 down. I can see some people are requesting a certain Toccata. A certain Toccata that I haven't played since I recorded it for the Call for Composers 1 um, back in July, I think, wasn't it? I'm not sure, we'll have to have a look. I don't really like uh, playing um, tricky things without practicing, practicing them here for you guys. I don't mind um, getting uh, busking my way through certain things, but there's some music I'm just a bit cautious about. I want to, we need to retain some level of quality, I think. <laughs> right, where should we go to next? Sam, are you in? Sam Sleeth, I can't see your name. If you are, give me a shout because you're going to have your hymn, we're going to have your hymn, Sing Praise to God Who Reigns Above, in the Ancient and Modern, which is this one, it's number 778. Uh, the tune is called Palace Green, it's a tune by Ma uh, Michael Fleming, who actually only died in 2006, so very, uh, very recently. Three verses, Sing Praise to God Who Reigns Above, the God of all creation, the God of power and God of love, the God of our salvation. With healing balm, my soul he fills and every faithless murmur stills. To God, all praise and glory. Can't see uh, Sam at the minute, but he often joins us a bit later on. Maybe he's having his, uh, maybe he's having his Sunday roast. I don't blame him. Okay, so let's go to the bird's eye view and hello, Hugo. He's looking through the door longingly. You can't come in here because you'll pull over a microphone stand <laughs> and it will all go wrong. Okay, here we go then, Sam. And we'll have an organ piece after this hymn. Um, I'm not quite sure what the organ piece will be yet.
Okay, well let's ease our way into this um, piece by our dear friend Graham Twist. Let's just build up a little bit of confidence, shall we? Daniel Kubaki, I think it was, no, maybe it's not Daniel Kubaki actually. Who is it? Is it on here? Mendelssohn, no. There's somebody else who has been requesting um, a, a piece by Mendelssohn for a long time. And I can't see this guy's name in the chat. He often leaves comments on the videos and he's been requesting it for a long time. So this is a sort of, this is perhaps the sort of piece that we might actually have towards the end of a VC for the voluntary. But it's a war march of the priests. Last time I played this, I remember I was, I was uh, we were in virtual St. Mary Laveau and actually, uh, no, it's fine. We had the settings basically turned up too high for the computer and because I was doing so many tremolos, uh, lots of notes sounding at the same time, let's say you do a tremolo like that, um, the computer couldn't keep up and it had a bit of a meltdown. So <laughs> I'll be a little bit wary about that. So Allegro Vivace, that's always a very daunting tempo marking, isn't it? <laughs> War March of the Priests by uh, Mendelssohn. Um, Archie Davis, you've changed your name. Okay, well you've actually asked for a little bit of bark, haven't you? We'll definitely have bark later on, certainly. Um, if you have any suggestions for bark, put it in the chat.
Oprah, there you are. Yes, I was just trying to remember your name. You finally got your request. And sometimes it takes a long time for the requests to filter through because we do have such a backlog. <laughs> you know, th these requests on the screen here, I mean, we've played, what, what we played, six hymns or so, they've been removed from this. Caroline's doing it next door, it's very clever. It was the request that we have just, just for today. Um, so we have a lot, so we probably can't get through all of them, which is a great shame. However, that just reminds me. Uh, what's the date today? Uh, two weeks time, in two weeks. Yes, is it two weeks time? Or was it next week? Something's telling me it's next week. Oh my God, giddy aunt it is, isn't it? Next week, next week, we'll have a good opportunity to catch up with the backlog. Why? Because I'm doing a 12 hour, another, another 12 hour organ marathon, virtual church, 12 hours. 12 hours of requests and nothing else. Luckily, I think we'll have a, a bit of a starting block, get through the backlog, and then we'll get through as many requests as we can in 12 hours. I wonder how many hymns we can have in 12 hours. That's amazing, isn't it? I have to play, play lots and lots, play them all at warp speed, to get through as many as we can. Next week, next week, that's, um, that's next Sunday, starting at 10 o'clock in the morning, UK time. So be sure to check your local time zone. Be sure to tune in as well. I've got some news about this very organ as well to share with you after this next hymn, which is one of my favourites. It is Nundanket Ale Gott. Um, obviously the words in English are not, uh, now thank we all our God. Uh, with heart and hands and voices. I'm just having a, a cheeky look in, the, in this great Noel Rawsthorn book to see what he's done with it. This has come in from, let's have a look, who is this coming from? David Turner, who is another one of our Patreons. Thank you, David, for your, for your help and support. Um, three verses of this wonderful tune. Um, harmony is, you may know or may not, it's been harmonized by Mendelssohn. So going from War March of the Priests. I think that's a great title, that, isn't it? War March of the Priests. Um, into another uh, harmonization by Mendelssohn with a little bit of harmony by Noel Rawsthorne as well. So a very um, um, collective, diverse um, effort this time. So David, here we go. Uh, how many have we got in the chat now? About 220. Okay, I think now is a good time to, um, whilst everyone, I know what sympathy was, so I can, I can probably cast my eye away from the music onto the chat. If you're in the chat, and you're listening to me right now, live, right, plus one, so I know who's in. And I'll, I'll, I'll have a look as we play. Now thank we all our God.
you know, I think it, it was so, <laughs> so overwhelming when I saw all those plus ones. I still made some mistakes when I was, when I was reading. I thought, this hymn, I can do this hymn from memory almost. But seeing everyone's names there was just so amazing that it, it, I, 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 I um, challenge anyone to not be moved by the amount of people who are uh, watching and, uh, and supporting. It's so wonderful. Right, I'm just going to zoom around in this um, the spreadsheet. If, if there's any confusion, by the way, of what, what on earth this is, this is the BIS requests form. This is now how you request your hymns and organ music. It's updated live. If you make a request this very second, click, I will see it appear on this spreadsheet. It's very, very high tech indeed. <laughs> it's the wonders of Google. This is a Google form, it's a Google spreadsheet. And it took a, quite a while to set up, actually. Um, but anyway, we've got there. And I'd like to just play a, repeat, uh, a piece by, uh, sorry, a, a request from Mark. Uh, Mark Goodwin. Mark, if you are in, just give me a big shout out. Because um, you're going to have your request. You've asked for, um, O Valiant Hearts, who to your glory came. It's in Hymns Ancient and Modern, and it's number 584. Let's have a look, 584. Let's hope we've got the right hymn book to hand. Oh no, 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 it's not. No, Mark, are you in? Um, you're gonna have to check to see. Um, oh, it's A&M Revised, okay. Thank you very much, Caroline. That's very kind. We'll just have to postpone that request for now because it's not, it's not the right... Um, Mark, uh, Mark did send me an email, actually, or was it on Patreon, uh, saying that, you know, um, there are various versions of ancient and modern. This one is called Hymns for Refreshing Worship. <laughs> I'm not quite sure what refreshing worship means, um, but if you want to feel refreshed, this is the hymn book you've got to go to. Um, and actually, funny enough, that three, uh, 584 was All My Hope and God Has Found It, our favourite hymn here in Virtual Church. Um, right, so, whilst that hymn is being found, I'm actually going to play another organ piece. Because I've, I've got a bit of a pile of organ music. So, let's just go into this Walford Davis. It's called Solemn Melody, and it's, it, it is often played and performed at um, occasions, on occasions like today, Remembrance Day. It's a solemn tune, it's very, very similar to the um, Falbin Ball Elegy, which you'll all know. Um, but it's a very different tune and it's, it's beautiful, it really is beautiful. So we'll have this, I don't, know if, I don't think anyone's requested it actually, um, but actually, well, I changed my mind. I requested it. Okay, so, Solemn Melody by Henry Walford Davies. Let's go to the um, bird's eye.
Can you see how similar that is to all the, uh, to the Thalbin Ball? I think Thalbin Ball must have uh, heard this piece um, and then improvised, because you all know the story that Thalbin Ball, the famous elegy was actually improvised uh, at, the, at the end of a BBC broadcast. I don't know whether it was a Coral Evensong broadcast, but it was a, a service being broadcast on Radio 3 uh, here in England and it was improvised and then it was transcribed by uh, Thalpin Ball himself, who actually, incidentally, it doesn't, when he plays it, it's really interesting because it doesn't sound very much like an elegy. It actually is, it's a lot quicker than people play it today. It has much more drive and direction. A lot of people, I think including myself, play that piece and this one um, in a very solemn way. You can just imagine a very rich, um, cello sound playing that um, wonderful tune and you wouldn't really have a cello playing a very quick and lively tune like that because a cello does, has, a, has a lot of colour and richness. Um, you can tell that I don't play with cello because I'm, I'm holding the, I'm holding the, the thingy here. <laughs> um, but anyway, that's, a, that's the little story of Thelton Ball. I think that, that, that one came first because the, the, the copyright date is 1910. So of course it came before Thalbin Ball's wonderful elegy. Right, Mark, I think we have your piece now. This, uh, I hope this is right. <laughs> let me just double check. Um, right, let me just go to, it's called The Supreme Sacrifice. And the words are thus. O valiant hearts who to your who to your glory came through the dust of conflict and through the battle flame. Tranquil you lie, your knightly virtue proved, your memory hollowed in the land you loved. Really appropriate for today, for Remembrance, um, for Remembrance Day. Um, there's seven verses here, but we probably won't have all seven verses because we'll, we've got a lot to get through. Um, let's let's have five verses, so we'll omit two verses of your choosing, uh, but we'll have five verses. Okay, and the tune, yeah, the tune is called The Supreme Sacrifice, and it's by Charles Harris, 1919.
There we go, Mark. I hope that was okay. Um, the hymn tune is rather strangely written out. I would be surprised if it wasn't as correct as Charles Harris originally wrote it in 1919. The, the meter feels very strange and the strong beats feel um, like they're on the wrong beat of the bar somehow, which is, which is causing me a little bit of confusion. Apparently we've been sent a better version, which we could play in 12-hour marathons, perhaps. Oh, there we go. So there we go. Yeah, we'll definitely we'll have it again. As, as, as someone pointed out, it is a wonderful tune. It's interesting to see that your um, the conversation has once again turned to um, to all things gourmet, food, and talking about turkey. You can talk about um, organs, if you like, and talk about your favourite hymns, talk about Charles Wesley, or George Herbert, perhaps. That's a good conversation for the chat, isn't it? Your favourite... Um, your favourite hymn writer, lyricist, um, writer of hymns. Who are your favourite hymns? Obviously, I've said George Herbert, uh, William Blake, um, and did those feet in ancient time. Let me know, actually, who your favourite writers of hymns are. That would be a good, a good topic of, uh, of conversation. Um, where do you want to go to next, guys? So, bearing in mind today is all uh, Remembrance Day. Let's go to Barry's request, Barry Ford. If you are with us, Barry, please do say hello. Um, Barry has asked for a wonderful hymn, Oh God, Our Help, in ages past. Now let's see if we can um, find it uh, in the NEH. And actually, Barry has chosen another hymn book, but I'm gonna play it from the NEH, I think, because I like it in, in here. This hymn talks about um, God being in the ages past, our hope um, for years to come. About having that, um, um, ha having someone to turn to in the future, as well as uh, the past as well. Uh, where is OG? Oh, oh God, I help. There is 417. 417. The tune is called St. Anne. And it's uh, after this particular hymn tune um, that the, the Bach St. Anne has subsequently become nicknamed. You all know that Bach didn't know this hymn. Well, it's, it's thought he didn't. He, he may well have known it, but it's very unlikely. Um, purely coincidental that the fugue, uh, the St. Anne fugue, is very similar to the hymn tune here. So, O oh God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come our shelter from the stormy blast and our eternal home. Um, this is a request from, um, actually, yes, yes, Barry Ford, who are you with, with us, Barry? Possibly not. But Barry, when you watch this later on, this one is especially for you. I'm gonna bring out one of the, um, the big solo reeds, because it's such a wonderful tune. I love it. Here we go.
I seem to remember seeing um, a video, an old video, possibly from the 80s, because that's really old, of Virgil Fox playing that extremely slowly, almost, almost half the speed of that, um, with a soprano singing and having to breathe after every single word, <laughs> soloist. But it, he was just re it was really amazing to watch him play that with such power and emotion. It's on YouTube somewhere. I think it's this hymn. Uh, have a look on YouTube, see if anyone can find it and let me know whether I, whether I was dreaming that or whether it's another hymn. I think it was this one. I think it was. Right. Um, who is in the chat? Julian Goldring, are you in the chat? If you are in the chat, please do let me know because we're going to play a ditty. Julian is here and often doesn't chat. Well, okay, well that's good. The voice from the heavens. Make sure you get the right tune. Well, which one is it? It's the right hand tune. Oh, crumbs, okay. John Dykes has written, um, looks uh, benigna. Ben -ni benigna. I think that's how you pronounce it. It'd be a silent G or a soft G. B E N I G N A. Ben Lux Beninia. Lead kind light amid the encircling gloom. Lead thou me on. The night is dark and I am far from home. Lead thou me on. Keep thou my feet. I do not ask to see the distant scene. One step enough for me. It's not a tune that I know. I don't think I know this tune. I wonder whether you will um, know this tune or not. Let's see what we think about this one. The tune that I th will normally know uh, or play to, this, to these words is one on the other side of the page. It's called Sandon. Actually, it's not even that one. Is it a, is it a Harris tune? Maurice, this, this is the sort of thing that you will know. Um, Alberta. Pardon? It's called Alberta, the Harris tune. All right, is it, but is it, is it to these words? Yeah. That's why I am. I, I am right. But that's the one in all the other hymnals. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, so let's have this one for for Julian. Lead kindly light.
There we go. So, um, one of the things about playing these hymns and playing um, this a really diverse selection of hymns, which are often are not particularly well known in a certain country, I, I don't know that one at all, actually. I, I had never heard that one. David Wright, um, not the temper that you grew up with, so presumably you, you knew it faster. When looking at a hymn for the first time, it's really important as a player to consider um, can the congregation fit the words in to the music? Is it going to be too fast? Are they going to trip over the words? Are they not going to have enough time uh, to consider the context and the meaning behind the words? Upon first glance of that, the first two lines of music are all quavers, with, with some semi-quavers, actually. Um, and I thought, hmm, all those semi-quavers, I'm sorry, you guys in America, I don't know whether that's 16th, 32, or 64th notes, I don't, that doesn't make sense to me. Numbers, it's, they're semi-quavers. Crotchets, quavers, semi-quavers, demi-semi-quavers, okay? Um, so seeing those, I thought, okay, we need to play it, play it a little bit slower. So, do you think it should have been faster? If so, next time, we'll just push it on a bit. We'll have a, a fraction faster. It's not an issue at all. Wonderful tune, though. Thank you very much for requesting it. Paul Larson. I've seen Paul chatting away. Paul's a very supportive chap. Um, and he's, he's, he's requested a real barnstormer of a hymn. Perfect for today, and I'm dying to play it. It is Eternal Father, strong to save. Um, let's have a look. Uh, have you been, have you done your due diligence and put the correct hymn book? Yes, you have, 354. I knew I could trust on you, Paul, to get the right one. 354. Eternal Father, strong to save, whose arm doth bind the restless wave, who bits the mighty ocean deep, its own appointed limits keep. O oh, hear us when we cry to thee for those in peril on the sea. If you are in, Paul, give us a shout out. I know you're in early on. Perhaps you've, you've gone off to um, um, turn up your barbecue or something. <laughs> I think you've been talking about barbecues in, in weeks gone by. There we go, Doug. Crotchet equals quarter, quaver equals eighth. Oh gosh. An eighth, an eighth. I never deal in eighths in anything. What about sixteenths? I don't. I've never had to say that something is a sixteenth of, of something. I say it a half, a quarter, a third, three quarters, perhaps. Yeah. I'd never have to go down to sixteenth or eighth. That's very complicated. <laughs> anyway, it's it's all sort of um, it's all it's all uh, what we're used to, isn't it? It's like the whole imperial measurements. Anyway, another conversation. Eternal Father, strong to say, for Paul Larson, who's a big fan of Herbert Howells, incidentally.
There we go, Paul, hope that was okay. Apologies for getting a little bit um, of a bit high. What you might say delicately had a bit of a brain fart at one point in the penultimate verse. Couldn't remember what chord I was on. <laughs> it's a good job there was no congregation, live here at least, to roll their eyes and think, what is the organist doing? What's he on? Sometimes uh, sitting here playing these hymns, it's very easy to get a little bit complacent and just almost forget that. Um, it, it's to get absorbed and wallow in the sound here and just in, have, basically have fun rather than being very disciplined um, and leading the congregation. It's very easy just to enjoy it a little bit too much, which is what I was doing a little uh, then, actually. And I just completely forgot the chord sequence. <laughs> what was... Anyway, let's not dwell on the things that go wrong too much. Right, okay, so whilst um, now I've just sort of warmed up a little bit, this is going to be dangerous. Graham, I think I did see your name mentioned. I know you don't chat very much, but I think you are around. I apologise in advance. Um, I'm actually going to play a piece by Graham Twist, which has not been um, uh, requested. And I've never played this before. I've never even seen it. I received an email from Graham a few weeks ago. Um, it's probably going to be, gosh, I don't know how far down it's going to be on the inbox now. I'm going to have to search for Mr. Twist. He sent a piece, which is just, he'd composed, um, and it's a chorale prelude on Repton. There it is. I'm scanning this now. Luckily, luckily it's, it's uh, fairly uh, readable. Thank you, Graham, for making it readable. He's written a chorale prelude on Repton, and I said to Graham that I would play it, and I, I like to stick to my word, and I am going to play it. It's beautiful. The, the, the tune, the Repton, is beautiful. One of the, I think a lot of people's favorite hymns, in most top 10 hymn charts, uh, you will see this hymn, Dear Lord and Father of Mankind, Forgive Our Foolish Ways. By, by Parry, uh, 353, I should know that. And then what I will do is, um, I will then go into the chorale by, there he is, hello Graham. Um, I will go into the chorale that Graham has written immediately from um, the original Parry version. Let me just fire, I haven't even opened it up in four score, so I can't twitch my mouth yet, I need to set it up. So it's share file via, Really random, isn't it? It's not share file via at all. It's open in four score. There it is. So let's just check the, the Twitch. Oh no, the Twitch isn't working. Not turned on, that's why. That would have been a bit annoying. Uh, so we'll have this. I don't know whether it's been requested actually. Let, I'd have a quick look at my request form. It must have been requested at some point, perhaps not for today. But we will have it today because it's just wonderful. And then we'll go into Graham's arrangement of it. So this is the premiere here on Beauty and Sound. This is the first time, not, not, not world premiere, this is a Beauty and Sound premiere. It's the first time that you would have heard this here on the channel and it's certainly the first time that I've, I've heard it and I'm really looking forward to it because Graham, Graham writes really, really nicely um, and I expect nothing less um, than, from Graham than for this to be beautiful. Before we get there, let's have Parry's own version to remind ourselves just how gorgeous this hymn tune is. Dear Lord and Father of Mankind.
As I expected, it was beautiful. It is beautiful. And I look forward to playing that again. That's just the um, sort of piece that you would have, perhaps at a, um, I can I just, just imagine that being uh, performed at a, during the communion, uh, at a memorial service before the service starts. So it's obviously a well-known tune and just the way the notes float around it just it, it it's just has it's it's wonderful um poignant um and well written music so graham thank you for sending it through thank you for making me aware of it and there we go beautiful music now i need to tab back to the google sheets and see where on earth we're up to um who have we got in this? It's really useful to play hymns um, from people who are actually in the chat because then we can engage with them. Um, so, um, Margaret, Margaret S-C-H, full stop. Are you in the chat? If you are, you will have Abide With Me, Fast Falls, The Even Tide. Um, now, which hymn book have you asked for? It's actually in 
it is actually in the NEH, so I'll play it from that one. Um, where's my NEH? Oh, it's here. I can't quite, it's three something, isn't it, guys? It's three something, I know that much. <laughs> I think three, three something. Um, three, three, one, there we go, it is. I've spoken about the words in this hymn before, um, but they're really, really powerful words. I think particularly appropriate for today. Hi, Margaret, you are there. Good to have you um, with us. So I'll play this for you. Um, five verses with a little bit of a crescendo towards the end, just to portray that really positive message that this hymn is giving us. These words are so powerful, so, so powerful. And I really love playing this. So for Margaret, um, abide with me. The tune is obviously called Eventide.
in life, in death. O oh Lord, abide with me. I don't think hymn writing comes much better than that, frankly. Wonderful music. Just had a courteous glance up at the chat, so um, it's good to have you all with us. Um, about 280 um, of us in the congregation today. You're all very welcome indeed. Jerry Webster, wowzers. <laughs> wowzers, trousers. Uh, Glenn Snyder, I just saw you chatting a second ago, so I know you're local. Um, you requested a hymn from the Evangelical Lutheran Worship. Where it is? Uh, 652. 652. And I had a request from you, Glenn, for a while, so I'm happy to play this. Built on a rock, the church shall stand, even when steeples are falling. Crumbled have spires in every land, bells still are ch chiming and calling. I think that's a chirp, chirping and calling, chiming and calling, calling the young and old to rest, calling the souls of those distressed, longing for life uh, everlasting. I think we've had this before. How do these words feel really familiar, only from a VC, um, particularly the bit even when steeples are falling, but the music doesn't look familiar to me. Um, let's see how we get on. Let's see how we get on. It might be super familiar when I uh, start playing it. However, first glance, I don't think I know the music. Glenn, hello, hello. Let's wait our way back to you. <laughs> hello. Right, so built on a rock, the church shall stand. Oh yes, yeah, so then I'll tell you a little bit of news about the organ. Um, the organ sale gossip. Hot gossip, hot news coming your way in a minute.
I take it back, Glenn, I, I have played that before on VC and I suspect it might have been your good self you requested it before as well. Um, there we go. Thank you very much uh, Terence and to James for your donations just now. It's certainly very, very helpful with um, the new organ about to arrive. Um, so actually, talking about organs, the news is um, that so this organ, you've probably seen the video, um, it's had over 10,000 views, um, nearly 11,000 views. This organ has been for sale for only six days. But I can now report that I have found a buyer. Um, I'm very pleased and, and, uh, and, and I'm very happy um, for it to go to um, a young organist. Um, based up in the north of England, uh, age 16, uh, about to start uh, his, um, I suppose, auditions and uh, preparations at least for, for Oxbridge organ scholarships. And he, it's not, despite the video actually uh, going, uh, me originally saying that it would go to the highest bidder, um, I decided not to do that. Um, and this, this gentleman had a very compelling and relatable story and I can just imagine myself uh, being 16 and um, potentially having access or having an organ like this in the house with these sounds um, would have been revolutionary, no doubt. When I was 16 this organ would have cost a heck of a lot of money. Um, they have come down in price now, but with Hauptwerk they are now um, fairly, well, very sought after, these instruments. Um, so it is going to a very worthy um, owner. I'm very happy that it is. It, it, will, it, will, it, it will be um, going to a very good home and will bring a lot of benefits to this uh, young organist. So I'm very, very happy about that. Um, you know, it's sometimes, it's not... You know, this, this, the, the, the idea of selling this organ, as I said in the video, I couldn't give this organ away simply because it's going towards the new organ. You know, I've budgeted for the new instrument uh, and part of the budget was made up of this organ, selling this organ. Um, but I'm happy to let it go for a bit less um, f to a good cause, and it, and, it, and it has. I don't know whether you're watching, actually, but you don't need to say hello. Don't worry, you don't, it's not a... You don't need to announce it, uh, but this person has um, said that they will uh, feature in a future uh, joint junior organ recital. So you will see the organ again on Beauty and Sound, but in someone else's house and someone probably far better than me uh, playing it. So that's really exciting as well. Right, guys, where, where are we up to? What's, what's the time? It's five to eight. Um, we need to get a, just a couple more hymns in before we go into the, um, the voluntary. Um, and someone has asked for some wonderful bark at the end. PJ, I've seen you knocking around. Um, it's just a really short and snappy name, PJ. I like that. Um, whether you, Are you still there? You've made a request for some bark at the end. I think we'll, ha we'll probably have that. Only, only one movement, I think, because I... The second, I will see, if I'm brave, I'll go on. <laughs> we'll have two more hymns, let's have a look. Where should we, what should we have? We've got so many to choose here that we haven't yet got through. We'll have a quiet one and a loud one. So, Jerry Martin, um, are you in still? I'm sure you are. Um, we will have your request, which is the first one, um, Soul of My Saviour. And we can go into the Veritas hymnal. Where is it? It's all the way over here. I can just about reach it. Beautiful hymn book, this. And it is number... Apologies for having to look down. This is, this is the only way I can see the, the, the tablet, the iPad. Um, it's number 32. Number 32. Yes, there it is. There it is indeed. Three verses. Soul of my in English, so I can read it, just about. These are normally in Gaelic. Soul of my Saviour, sanctify my breast. Body of Christ, be thou my saving guest. Blood of my Saviour, bathe me in thy tide. Wash me 
the waters streaming from his side. Three verses of this wonderful tune. Um, thank you very much, Craig, indeed. Um, well, that's very kind. Yes, I, well, I, I definitely agree with the second um, part of your sentence there. A, a wonderful family. Um, I'm, just, I'm just a guy who is in a very fortunate position uh, to be able to give um, this organ to a worthy cause um, for a, uh, I think, for a, a very fair price. Um, I'm just, I, I just imagine myself being him at that age and how amazing it would be to have this. And it will really help with his organ scholarship auditions, preparations. So, fingers crossed, it all works out. Jerry, let's have um, Soul of My Saviour. Yeah, it's very interesting that you actually noticed as well that the harmony is different. Um, Orgel Haas, thank you very much indeed. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, that wonderful diminished chord at the end, <laughs> towards the end there. I wasn't expecting that at all. Listen to this. Wow, that is really quite something, isn't it? I wonder whether that's the original harmony. Um, in any age, it's a different harmony. You've, you've rightly pointed out, it is very different. Um, I've never seen that harmony before. It's actually rather juicy. <laughs> right, we are sucking on diesel, um, as they say in a, a rather popular British BBC drama. We'll have one more hymn, and then we'll have the vols. Now, where on earth shall we go, guys? Um, what am I going to choose? I want to keep you entertained, I want to keep you happy, and I want to keep those numbers up. I don't want you to leave early. Um, ooh, ooh, so, much, so much choice here. You've all requested such good hymns. I'm not kidding, they're all really good. 
O oh, Jesus, I have promised, lo, he comes with clouds descending, lift high the cross, God is our hope and refuge, come labor on, the kingdom of God, God of our fathers, uh, Christ has made the sure foundation, sleepers awake, the God of Abraham prays, stand up and bless, all, all of these wonderful tunes. Guys, there's so much choice here. I'm gonna choose one now, I've gotta choose one. Let's, uh, let's go for a, a, an uplifting one to end with. Oh, crumbs! No, we need to have, um, have a short one, then we need to have the English National Anthem. We need to have that, don't we? Um, what is short? What is short? What on earth is short? Let's have, let's tell you what, I'll tell you what. So Jenny Allen, I know Jenny Allen's in, she's been chatting away, and has been chatting away a lot over the past few weeks. It's wonderful to see familiar names. It's wonderful to see people returning for more. Uh, and I'm going to reward that. Jenny Allen has requested um, Sleepers Wake. A very, very exciting, you know, um, chorale harmonized and made famous, I guess, by the great man JSB. Um, so I'm gonna find it. You actually requested it in a different hymn book to what I'm going to use, but it's the same tune. It's very early on in the NH, it's in the, in the Advent section. I can't believe we are in Advent only in a couple of weeks' time. So we'll, we will only have one verse, so you, you better make the most of it. I will. Wake, awake, with tidings thrilling, the watchmen all the air are filling. Arise, Jerusalem, arise, midnight strikes. Actually, this is um, really effective in German as well. Um, but anyway, I haven't got time. So, Jenny Allen, this is for you. Um, Wacket auf, ruft uns die Stimme. Stimme. Um, let's go. One verse. It's over before you know it.
So I did promise I'll give you one verse. However, I think the mic, well, the microphone was open for the first uh, verse. So I thought I'd give you another verse just because um, I didn't do something right. <laughs> you know, it's, I, that happened last week. I pressed the button, but it didn't engage. It's rather annoying, isn't it? Right, so now then, we're going to have a big voluntary tonight because it is a, such an important and poignant day. Um, before we get to the big voluntary, we need to have a big national anthem. I think I need to get up. I have, I have to excuse me, I can carry on talking because luckily the microphone cable is really long. I just need to go and find my bark collection, which is on the windowsill over here. I'm just destroying the studio set. Um, and let's find uh, number, which one is it? Book four. What's in book four? I wonder. Well, you'll have to find out after uh, the English. I need to get, get on the organ bench without pulling out my microphone. That's going to be a bit of a challenge. There we go. I think I've managed it. Hello, testing, testing. <laughs> um, right, let's fire up the NEH again. Get the um, National Anthem ready, and then we'll go into the vol. You definitely know the voluntary. You'll all know it. You'll all know it. Okay, so, um, who, how many have we got? We've nearly got 300 people, uh, which is actually quite a good number for a VC live, because I know a lot, of, a lot of you will watch it later in the week. But it's so, it's so nice to have a good number watching live. It's just so much more exciting and thrilling. Because we've got more people, and we'll have a different, a different congregation than we did earlier on, give me a plus one to let me know um, that you're in with us. It's wonderful to see all of the plus ones. I'm going to bring the, um, um, the chat very close whilst I'm playing this. You let me know you're in. I'll see you on the other side. Thank you, by the way, everyone, for being so um, engaging today and making it a lot of fun. I can't wait to go back through the chat and uh, to read what you've been saying. Here we go then. So, if you may, <laughs> if you're so inclined, let's all be a standing, or let's all stand up for the English National Anthem. Actually, the Queen isn't very well at the minute, so we need to um, bear her in mind on a serious note.
and then two pieces uh, for you today will have the beautiful piece by Elgar Nimrod just to set the scene and then we'll have the prelude in E flat and known as the St Anne by Bach.
isn't that just the most powerful um, music, I think, that Bach probably wrote for the organ. Uh, doesn't really get much more powerful than that. Three different styles in there, Italian, um, French, and German. And uh, perhaps a bit more on the theory behind that particular piece another time. Well, that brings uh, a close to today's virtual church, um, especially for Remembrance Day. Um, I hope that was okay for you. I hope, uh, apologies we didn't get all of the hymns in, um, but next week, next this time next week, 12 hours of your requests. So we'll get them in next week if we can. <laughs> thank you for being so engaging in the chat. Um, thank you to Bobby who came in and just very elegantly walked on the organ, but didn't step on the keys. It's almost like she knows not to. Uh, it's like rather lucky, isn't it? Um, yes, yeah, so next week, um, organ marathon, another one. Um, it, it, it's all, I forget how many we've done now, but it's, it's a bit of a tradition here on, on Beauty and Sound to have organ marathons. Um, and it's rather a fun, it's really a really good opportunity for us to sort of have a bit of fun together and, uh, and yeah, meet new people and all of that sort of stuff. So until next week, um, I will say a very fond thank you <laughs> and also, of course, a cheerio. Take care, everyone. Stay safe and goodbye.